Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Macroverse. Today, we're going to talk about the most recent CPI report. We're going to be discussing the headline inflation numbers year over year, core CPI year over year. And we're also going to break down headline inflation by the constituents of it, sort of figure out what in fact is holding it up. And finally, we will look to see if this is going to have any material impact on the terminal rate. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So headline inflation came in today on the most recent CPI report at about 3.7%, 3.71% to be exact. And the reason why this might make some news headlines, it, well, I guess during the rate hiking cycle, we always get it in the news, but it does now mark two consecutive months of headline inflation sort of going in the wrong direction, right? Now, we speculated that this was likely going to be a scenario for, for inflation as a lot of the prior tailwinds, or sorry, a lot of the prior headwinds for CPI are now becoming tailwinds when you look at where they were a year ago. And so it's not really out of the realm of expectations that headline inflation is remaining somewhat sticky around this three to four percent level, I would argue that this was probably the most. This was likely the most. This was the most likely outcome, in my opinion, and and my you know I, I still think we we will see headline inflation remain relatively sticky here for another month or two. But I actually I do anticipate it to continue to come down because I expect the Fed to continue on with what they have said, and that is to keep interest rates higher for longer and to continue with their QT. We can see that it's having a material impact. It just takes a long time. And again, one of the mistakes that the Fed made back in the 70s was to pivot back to QE too quickly, and, and which ultimately led to the, the resurgence of inflation. My speculation is that they're going to be less likely to do that this time. And therefore, while headline inflation might remain sticky around this level, for a little bit, it should eventually come down. Um, and again, right now we are looking at headline inflation at 3.71%. If we were to take a look at the monthly change, you can see that last month it went up about 0.2%, but this month it actually went up about 0.4% month over month. So it's not really what the Fed wants to see, but I also don't think it's sufficient to really change the Fed's mind on an interest rate hike in September. So my guess, and we'll, we'll check in with the markets here in a little bit, my guess is that the, 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 the bond market still thinks that the Fed will um, just sort of skip at the next meeting. That's not to say that it has to be the terminal rate, although 5.5% could be, but it's just to say they'll probably wait for more data and we'll wait for the next meeting to figure out if they're actually gonna go to 5.75%. To now, it's important to understand what is causing inflation to sort of remain elevated. And so what we can do is we can break it down by the components, right? So in, in this case, we're looking at, at headline inflation, um, but we can break this down really by all the, all the constituents, right? So we can look at, at what is in fact holding it up. If we were to hide everything and just sort of go through the list, we can see that food and beverages continues to come down, right? This is what we want to see. You know, no matter really where you are sort of on the, um, you know, your views on the market, ideally inflation comes down, you know, so that it stops uh, creating, you know, much, much higher prices that are going to make it very difficult for people to, to sort of live on. So just from like a practical perspective, it is great to see inflation coming back down. Another reason why it's great to see inflation coming down is because it could theoretically lead to a more sustained uh, economic expansion phase if if we can get inflation back down to lower levels. As long as it remains elevated, then we're going to have a, you know, a, a hawkish Fed and they're going to continue on with QT, which could provide headwinds for, for risk assets. It's not to say that, you know, that, that some of them can't move higher. It's just to say that at some point the Fed might run the risk of over tightening and, and potentially kick us into a, a recession. So food and beverages is, is still coming down. And, you know, looking at the month over month change there, this last month has not been as big of a decrease as, as some of the prior months, but it still is a decrease. And I, I think that's the important thing to look at here is that, you know, it is coming down and that's what we want to see. Now, housing is one of the things that it's been, that, that's been holding inflation up 
uh, for a long time. And, and one of the reasons is because it, it's very much a lagging indicator, right? It, it takes a lot longer for you know interest rate hikes and all this other stuff sort of reach to the real estate market. Food and beverages topped out in August of 2022 in terms of its sort of its peak peak inflation rate, but housing didn't actually peak until January of 2023. So there's a there's a large lag effect on on this. I expect this to continue coming down. Now, what's interesting with headline inflation is if you look at the monthly the the monthly change, this last month was actually a pretty decent drop. I mean, last month was only about a negative 0.0595% drop, but this one was back to negative 0.213, which is a very welcome sight, right? We want to see these things coming back down, and 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 so far they are, right? So if you were to look at housing uh, inflation, you know, over over the years, I mean, you can see that it it, it sort of has its it, its cycles and whatnot. What we want to avoid is something like this in in sort of the 70s, where it, it got down to a level before then going back up. And one of the reasons it went back up was just simply because you know the Fed kept sort of pivoting back to QE far too soon, and then it led to another wave of of inflation. And I know there's a lot of people that think we're going to emulate something like this. Right where we just keep putting in higher and higher peaks on inflation. While that could be the case, I, I cannot rule it out. I would I would argue that it's more likely that that this just simply comes back down. I mean, I'm not not to say we can't have another peak later on, but um, I, I sort of suspect it, it might actually just be a lower high rather than higher highs like we saw in the 1970s. But we of course will follow this to see if the trend ultimately change changes. So far, it at least is moving in in the in the direction that we want to see if we look at apparel you can see that that has has come down uh slightly over the last month the monthly change is, is relatively small again you know the the inflation year of year contribution from apparel is not very much right but it is it is at least a trend that that sort of topped out in march of 2022 and and ever since then it's been sort of in a downtrend you sort of can see that locally in 2023 it has maybe been going sideways with a slightly bullish bias almost um so we'll, we'll keep a close eye on this one at least since april of 2023 it has been it has been seemingly slowly moving back down if we were to continue we could look at transportation now transportation the transportation sector has actually been deflationary for several months um, you can see not including this current month but for the last five months transportation was actually deflationary in march in May, in June, and July. This month, it is actually back to being inflationary, although a relatively small amount, nothing to, you know, to be concerned about uh, at this point. This is what transportation sector looks like, sort of zoomed out. You can see there's plenty of periods here where it actually does go um, deflationary, okay? So, and, and even it's gone deflationary in 2015 and 2016 uh, when we didn't even have a recession, right? And, and also in, in 98 and 99, uh, when we when we did not yet have a recession, and and also in in 1986, my speculation is again that the end of this business cycle will likely result in a recession once we get on the other side of of the yield curve inversion. So once the yield curve becomes uninversion, uninverted, that's probably where the recession risk materializes the most. Uh, but at this point, um, you know, it, it, it at least is good to see the the inflation numbers coming coming down. For most of the categories, even if even if some of them are, are still slightly elevated, for medical care, it actually continued its deflationary uh, trend last month. You can see that in, uh, that that medical expense or medical care um, was down negative 0.0415 percent. Now it's down negative 0.0769 percent. The monthly change is is slightly less than it was last month, but it still is trending in in a direction that that brings down the overall inflation numbers. Recreation has has continued to drop, um, and a monthly change would show that it's actually more significant of a drop than we've seen since November of 2021. So pretty good drop there by recreation in, or inflation in the recreation sector. Education and communication. Um, if we were to sort of look at at you know just sort of what that one's doing, you can see that it has uh, dropped here in this most recent month, which is a welcome sight, especially after moving up in the most in, in in the last month so we'll of course continue to watch that my expectation is that it will slightly or it will continue to slowly trend down other goods and services continues to trend down as well so all in all you know we've sort of gone through all the categories here just sort of pulling up headline inflation 
you can see that yes, locally we ha we are starting to move back up some, uh, which is is not necessarily what we want to see. But we also must remember that the path back down to two percent is a stochastic path, right? It's not a linear path. Even if you were to look at, at these other trends sort of coming out of these inflationary periods, there were periods where it, it shorter, shorter time frames where it spiked back up only for it to eventually come back down, right? And, and even over here, coming out of the inflationary period back in the 1980s, what you'll notice is that this bottomed out in June and then it topped out in September. So a bottom in June and then a top in September. You go to it today, it bottomed in June, and now we're we're potentially looking at a top in September, right? If that's the case, it means that headline inflation could actually once again come in higher than the previous month next month, right? But after that, if it wants to follow this sort of this disinflationary trend, then by the time you get to October, November, December, it should be coming back down, okay? And, and so that is, again, that is still my general expectation is that inflation will trend back down, even though we're currently in an, an inflationary, sort of a, a smaller inflationary impulse, simply because of some of the uh, some of the base effects became less favorable as we got into Q3. But, you know, once we get out into Q4, Q1, I imagine uh, things will, will sort of revert to the overall trend, especially as, as, as sectors like housing uh, and those lagged effects really start to take effect in the overall CPI numbers. It's probably worthwhile to also go look at uh, core inflation because while headline inflation has gone up, core inflation uh, continues to go down, which is a welcome sight. So last month, core inflation was at 4.7%. This month, it's down you know, considerably, right? Down to about 4.4%, 4.39% to be exact. So it, that's a pretty good move here uh, for, for core inflation to sort of see that when coming back down to that 4.3 to 4.4% level. Um, and, and, I, and I imagine that that one will likely continue to sort of come down. And, and you'll probably get bounces uh, occasionally in core inflation. But my expectation is that when we look back on this period in a couple of years, I would generally expect it to trend down with some occasional bounces along the way. The I think the bigger issue is can the Fed sort of stop it around this 2% level eventually without sort of rebounding and going up before you get to 2% or going well below 2%. Because if you go well below 2% and you become deflationary rather than just simply disinflationary, then that could also become a problem. So our general expectations, I mean, going into the meeting, we saw that the odds of a rate hike in, in September were relatively low, only about 7%. So we can go check in. On, on what it is right now. We'll reload the page again. It looked like it was at about 5%. Yeah, I mean, now it's at 3%. So it seems like we're pretty much locked in for for the Fed to sort of skip at the uh, at the September meeting. If they were to raise at the September meeting, I imagine that would be a curveball for the markets. So probably going to be a skip at the next meeting that occurs here on September 20th. So that's exactly a week from today. Now, what's more important is not to look at what happens in September, because I think we're more, more than likely locked in for that. Let's go see what happens out in November, okay? Because that's probably what's, you know, what, what is more worthwhile to take a look at. And you can see that in November, markets are expecting a 60% chance almost of, of, of holding at 5.5%. Now, when we first started this rate hiking cycle, I suggested that we could go to at least that five to five and a half percent level. Okay, now we're at the five and a half percent level, and I find myself in this position of thinking like, well, this could be the terminal rate, right? Five and a half percent could be the terminal rate. But with that said, it's always important to remain open-minded about further tightening, especially if inflation remains sticky. Okay, so I imagine that the markets at this point still like to see core inflation coming down and, and perhaps the Fed will, will sort of view that as a reason to continue to just hold at five and a half percent. But if, if core inflation were to surprise to the upside or if headline inflation were to significantly surprise to the upside next month, then perhaps there would be justification for another rate hike. At this point, I, I honestly could see it going either way. Um, five and a half percent, I think, is likely sufficiently restrictive. Although if it is sufficiently restrictive, 
it needs to be held at that level for more than just a couple of months, right? So holding it at five and a half percent for two months and then going back down is, is likely not going to be sufficiently restrictive. However, if on the other hand, they just had it at five and a half percent and they kept it there for, let's say, a year, then that probably would be sufficiently restrictive to sort of bring inflation back down. So it's not just about getting inflation uh, or it's not just about getting the, the, the Fed funds rate to a certain level. It's also about holding it at that level long enough for it to have a material impact and also recognizing that a lot of the rate hikes that already occurred have potentially yet to be filtered out to the economy. So there's this potential lag effect that are that, that are wide and, and variable, and it's hard to account for exactly how much of that tightening has yet to hit the economy anyways. So again, that's one of the reasons why I think the Fed is skipping is because that just gives the prior rate hikes more time to sort of filter through to the economy to figure out, you know, ultimately what are the effects that those rate hikes are going to have. So, you know, if the Fed were to go to 5.75% or 6% soon, then that might not be giving the prior rate hikes long enough to really, you know, have their whatever their intended impact is going to be. So I think that's the reason why the Fed has been skipping. But if come November, if if if, if in November the S&P is, is pushing to new highs and, and headline inflation is back above 4% and core CPI is bouncing, then yeah, like there's a good chance that they'll just simply raise again, going to to 5.75%, and um, and maybe even 6% is is possibility. But you know, going back over, I think a year and a half ago, we suggested that the terminal rate could be around that five and a half percent level. We now find ourselves there, and currently that's what the market thinks is the terminal rate. We will see if ultimately that pans out or not. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. I know it's called Into the Cryptoverse, but we actually do have a lot of macro charts as well, including things on inflation. And if if you want, we also do, in fact, have a free tier associated with Into the Cryptoverse, where you can actually get a weekly newsletter as well as access to at least some of the charts that you see me talk about on, on my YouTube channel. We'll wrap it up there. Thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye.